viewers, uh, <clears throat> my name is uh, Dominic Omugonda. I am a Catholic priest and uh, currently I'm the Dean of Students at the University of Nairobi where I also teach in the Department of Sociology and I'm very, very happy to be here, although it's a bit late. I apologize, Father. Yes. Good evening, viewers. My name is Latif Shaban. I work for the Supreme Council of Kenya Muslims, Supkem, and I'm also happy to be here tonight. And I am... Uh, Pastor Marie Wanjao, Senior Pastor of Mahuna Church, and glad to be here. Well, gentlemen, uh, I'm sure we can still get this going <laughs> at some point, so let's see. So. We know what the challenge is, a few days towards elections, a lot we can say, but we're here now, and we want to talk about the importance of this, and I know you've been doing some training, JB. What has been your situation with your flock? Um, with our flock, uh, what I've done is what I've always uh, done every election, that we do some civic education also, because it's a civic duty for every person to go out and vote. So the, uh, the first thing we did during the registration, we cooperated with the IEBC. Uh, even our church was a registration center, and some of our churches in the country are registration centers and even voting centers, some of our schools. And uh, for this last week, uh, we, we, I, what I did as well myself last Sunday is that I put the photographs of all the candidates, national, uh, presidential, and the uh, governors for Nairobi, senators for Nairobi, women rep for Nairobi, and the MPs for our area, so that people can know, I tell, so that they can know this is the, the people who are standing. This Sunday, what I intend to do, uh, because it's no campaigning, we, we intend to show them the different colors of the different ballot papers, so that when they go on Monday, they will know this color is for the presidential, this is for, uh, for the governor's seat, this is for the Senate seat, this is for the MPs, this is for the women rep. That's what we want. This is how we want to work with the IBC. So you've been a trainer. You've gotten involved in the training. Plan. I know Mavuno also has a lot of, of followers. You have a lot of people who you teach and train every day. When they ask you to your face, how should we vote, what do you tell them? Well, I tell them that um, it's a, we are living in amazing times. We actually have a privilege to pick um, a leader for ourselves as a nation. This is what our forefathers fought for, that we would have the right to choose. I challenge them to use their minds. I what we've done as a church is we've taught them the character qualities of a good leader. We talk about things like having people who show compassion consistently, people who have character, uh, people who have competence, they're able to get the job done. So we've talked about values. And then we say choose the person who we think best exemplifies this. Now, I make sure I don't, I tell them, you know, I, I'm not going to tell you who to pick. Um, one of the things I can tell you for sure is in our congregation, we probably have supporters of almost every one of those eight presidential candidates. And I tell them, this is the beauty of it, that we can actually be in a place where we can uh, pick whoever it is. Many of us are going to be disappointed after the March 4th. Some of us are going to be elated, but Kenya will go on. Right. And we'll still be one country after that. Do you see, John, do you see fair competition? Do you see the correct kind of uh, discourse being held? Do you see the correct challenges going out to the potential voter? Well, I think I'm, I'm, uh, I'm disappointed a bit because uh, I think having participated in the Task Force on National Values and Principles of Governance, I see that our vetting process to the point where we got the people who are running right now did not go very well. Of course, I mean, the nomination process, especially through the, the parties, was a mess. It would have been better if we got into a situation whereby the people we are being presented about, even if you close your eyes and you just put in one of them, you'd be sure. But right now, we, 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 we are still at the point where even the civic education that has been done is being done a bit late. But the hope we have is that Kenyans have taken, and especially the church and the, uh, the religious organizations, have taken responsibility, and especially on matters to do with training, and going out and equipping the membership on exactly what is expected of them. Yeah. And uh, what uh, Pastor Moridi is saying is that we have gone out and very critically uh, given the congregation and the membership what are the qualities of the leaders we are looking for, the competence, the calling, the credibility, you know, those issues that are there, but then hoping that we will not get to such a situation again in the next elections where we don't have good vetting 
before we get to the election time. So you're starting with that now. Muslims have been very, how would I say, attractive uh, as a component in the campaigns we've seen. And some have even argued uh, there have been promises broken. There's been a role of inclusion that has been attractive for anybody who's looking for the Muslim vote. Outstandingly, we are now seeing uh, clear statements coming from certain quarters within the Muslim community saying we will support a particular candidate. But Latif, just tell me what you think about the situation. Uh, thank you, Louis. Frankly, I know the Muslims in this country find themselves in a very unique position in that they have always been perceived to be the swing vote. Now, that puts us into a special category of a voter. When it comes to the role that we as a council play, I want to again emphasize what uh, Basinde has said. We have engaged consistently on civic education, on voter education, and also the need to have a conducive environment where we have a very peaceful country to be able to discharge the responsibility. But I want to be very clear at this point in the, in the, in the countdown to the, to the elections on the 4th, our council, that is the Supreme Council of Kenya Muslims, have not come out to endorse any candidate. As Supkem. As Supkem. It is against our constitution, and we have consistently, if you look at the years gone by, we've never done that. And I want again to state here tonight that in 2007, our council was under a lot of pressure from those who chose to do things to do with MOUs and all that. We chose to remain true to our tradition of not being partisan. And that is still what is happening. This has to come out very clearly. I know that a few Muslims have been seen in the media, have been captured in the media, but do not forget that the politics of this land are actually based on who is on your side. Right. And as I said in the beginning, the Muslims have always felt we are under maybe undue pressure mm -hmm. to be able to be seen to be supporting a particular political thinking or a particular alliance. Okay. Yeah. Father, being Africans, uh, we, we were born and raised first to respect and fear our parents, then the next person who respects and fears the teacher, and then of course the pastor comes in. Has that made it a role? Is that then a responsibility for you who are church leaders to give particular direction when it comes to elective politics? <laughs> Let's put it this way, Louis, that um, yes, our people do listen to what church leaders have to say. But we have also seen in the past that uh, our people have listened to what church leaders have said and, and the case of the the, uh, the the referendum in 2010 mm. is a case to, 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 to watch where church leaders decided to to take a stand a specific stand but um, a lot of the Christians did not go along with that um, and, and I have always argued that the church's biggest role I think is a teaching role, a teaching role. And once you have taught people, uh, then you have given them a value system by which to judge situations, mm -hmm. a value system by which to live, and so on. Then you don't have to supervise their choices mm -hmm. uh, because you have already done your role of teaching them and exposing them to the truth, exposing them to that which is just, exposing them to a value system, and probably giving them a conscience to be able to judge situations. So uh, what is happening here is that uh, in this situation of the elections, uh, uh, at least our church, at least the church where I minister at St. Paul's Chapel in the university, we have a Justice and, uh, Justice and Peace Commission which uh, organizes fora where discussions are held, discussions about the constitution, about elections, and so on and so forth. But we focus on talking about values and so on, but not individuals. We don't endorse individuals and say this is the candidate we want and so on. That would be that would be contravening the very the very uh, you know the very value system we stand for because we have to respect the as as, as Maurice was saying mm. uh, we, we also are a church that uh, encompasses everybody. We probably have people in that church. The youth have a preference for a particular candidate. The 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 the, 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 the older people have a preference for another one, and so on. The particular tribe in that community has a preference for their own. Another tribe has a preference for their own, and so on. You can't go telling them, "Let's go for this one," because that would be contravening and actually causing trouble. Okay, gentlemen, and feel free. No particular batting order. Feel free to jump in at any one point, because now I'll, the questions I'm addressing are for all of you to answer. Mm. Do you think religious leaders have actually managed? 
to escape that wall which is so tempting to point the flock in a particular direction. When you do all that education, JB, are you telling me there's no risk that some will look for any inclinations? Are you telling me that you're able to keep away uh, the political leader who will come and tell you, JB, what do you do in that situation? How do you escape that? You make a conscious decision, and that's what I did. I said I'm not giving my microphone to any political leader. And that one I stood on, and we told all our pastors, don't give your microphone to any. If he comes to worship, he's welcome. And they did. They'll come and they'll worship. But what we did is because we are, we have a multimedia, uh, we are multimedia kind of setup mm -hmm. where we have those screens and all that. We put the pictures on the screen for everybody to see. These are the presidential, eight presidential candidates. These are the several governors. So every, everyone cannot say my candidate was not seen. You saw it on the screen, period. And we prayed for all of them. And my message to them was, Come 5th of March, one of these shall be our president. One of these shall be our governor. One of these shall be our member of parliament. One of these shall be our women rep. So you've and kept your microphone sacred? My microphone is sacred. Tangu Zaman. <laughs> John, is, uh, what is the case for you? You've had so many of these situations where there's interaction. But when you're challenged, when, when, when we look at the history of when the church has been challenged by the conscience of the people you lead, some actually put up a very big case in 2010 and said, why didn't you point us? in a direction we needed. What do you do this time? Well, I think, I think Louis, there, there are two issues. Even during the referendum, I think matters were hijacked. Of course, we were dealing with polit politicians, and you, they, they have their own agenda, and they have a way of bringing out, because when it, it is a matter of issues, issue-driven, like what Father Wamogod is saying here, the church has to give direction. There were issues that were contentious, mm -hmm. and actually both sides agreed there are some issues of contention. The only thing was, when are we going to deal with this issue? One, the yes campaign was saying, let's deal with the matters immediately after the elections, which was not possible because of the referendum. The referendum, after the yeah. referendum. Yeah. But then the church was saying, no, let's address the issues before. But all the parties were in agreement, this constitution is what we have been waiting for for a long time. But then, of course, that time, even now, I insist the church needed to give direction on issues. It was not anything to do with So how do you describe the status now? Now, the status now, if you have noticed, you, churches have not come out one, one endorsing this one and the other one endorsing the You've other. You've escaped that this time. We <laughs> have. I mean, we have. We have been there you before. Know, and uh, yeah, during know, the last election, yeah. we were in Stadia and other places anointing. Anointing. There was, and, a, uh, there was a Sunday that almost... Different churches were anointing different people. Yes. And it was on tele uh, television. As an attraction to the youth, is that still the tag that Mavuno wears? That, that you're largely youth? You're a young flock? Well, it's. Uh, How do they challenge you on these issues? Yeah, and, and I'd say. Youth and aren't is, you really the kind of person a leader would come and say, I need to have a message for the youth? Absolutely. And you know, the youth is 75% of this country. So I always say we're the majority population in that sense. And. I would say that the young people are a lot more sensitive. Um, they would be very keen to, be, to, to see their church allowing a space for everybody to, to be represented in that yeah. sense. Huh? Mm. Uh, I think they're very sensitive to that. And mm. uh, one of the things we've even tried to do, I mean, um, and I think this is something that this generation is very keen on, is to ensure that even on the pulpit, that there's a multi-ethnic representation. Yes. That it's not just... Uh, my background, because I'm the senior pastor that's represented there, that there's a multiplicity of different people. So that everybody in the church feels included. And we tell them, even we as pastors, we don't support the same presidential candidate. And that's fine. <laughs> you know, that's the beauty of living in, in the times that we're in. Mm -hmm. I think the youth can see the opportunity. I feel like there's a, a, a post uh, March 4th scenario for this country that many of us have focused on so, so much on that one date that we're forgetting that God is doing such huge things and that this country is poised on such big opportunities if we could just pull together as a nation and get ourselves past this. Yes. And the, unique, yes, John. Yeah, and I wanted to say actually, in some situations like what uh, Bishop is saying here, the, 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 the politicians have been kept off, but have been in various churches where the microphone has been given. But then you call all those candidates, you tell them you have two minutes, yeah. let's get to interact, because we have not met you guys and we, some of our congregation is busy. At the university, in uh, Park University, we gave a chance to all those people in Roisambu, the constituency and the, the civic seats, to come and, you know, and we had a panel, like the presidential debate, 
tell us who you are, what you stand for, and we question them. I am a doctoral student with the African International University. Today, all the candidates from Langata were in current at uh, AIU. You are laying your hands. hands. No, no, no. <laughs> there is no laying of hands. You are being, you are being questioned like Interrogated. Interrogated. It's like, like a, a, an interview panel. You know, here you are, you are telling us you want to lead us. Now tell us your, 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 what you start. Has that been effective? It is effective. Actually, people are so excited. They were saying, now I'm convinced about who we are, uh, I'm going to That made me I mean, take like a swipe. It's, it's like the debates. Wait, wait, it made me happy. take a swipe at, uh, at Father here. Because when I saw there was uh, a, an effort to have uh, these candidates come and speak to the church, when I called Father Mguni to invite him to this show, I asked him, is there a scenario where there's a Vatican in this country? Will there be a separate administration that the leadership will focus on what you need? Mm -hmm. are, are you talking about the, the debates? The, 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 the so, or, not so much the particular debate, yeah. but was that a good thing to do, to try and bring the candidates to speak to Christians separately? I, I, I thought, I watched those two debates, the vice presidential debate and then the, the, the presidential debates that were done at All Saints. All Saints. And I, I watched that and uh, I, 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 my biggest question was, for instance, I saw uh, some questions that were asked. Uh, uh, what did you stand on abortion, for instance? Mm -hmm. uh, do you tithe, for instance, mm -hmm. and things like that. <laughs> and and I, I said to myself, that's very good. But the agenda it tended to be pretty narrow there. Right. I mean, I would have wanted a broader agenda that uh, captures the, the, the aspiration of every Kenyan and, uh, and, 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 and every, every you know, sector of society and so on. Uh, because uh, tithing I mean, could mean anything to anybody and so on. But, uh, and a lot of the candidates said, oh, I tithe and I'm faithful and blah, blah, blah and so on. Now, it was a good thing for churches to take take an initiative like that, I mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. But that initiative could have been uh, a little more profound, I thought. I, this is me now. Yes, a little, even from where I sit and from where I stand, I thought it could have been more profound. But as a, a beginning, I thought it was a great initiative, yes. So you went one step further. Yeah. And we saw people at Sarali, we saw people in other places, we saw people doing what they are now happy to say, they have not endorsed anybody. So. How then should the country look at the Muslim action now? Should we say there is no agreement in how Muslims are regarding the politics of the country? Should there be a blanket Muslim position? In any case, is that the way? Maybe in the past, say 2007, there was reason to maybe think as a block. But frankly, we have a new constitution now. Mm -hmm. We are going devolution, 47 county governments. Right different political parties in all those 47 counties. How do you convince somebody in Nyanza, as a Muslim, to vote for a political party that is not strong there? Because eventually, that Muslim would want the resources that are there for everybody, yes. which means they have to align themselves with the political leadership there. Yeah, I and, uh, you have, see, have we become Have we become that knowledgeable? Have we become that empowered absolutely. as a voter? Absolutely. I'm telling you, we have discussed this as a council. Yes. And we were also challenged by the traditional role of being nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. When you have a central government, it is possible to, to be nonpartisan. But frankly, if you interrogate the issue of being nonpartisan in a, in a, in a devolved yeah, system, mm -hmm. it, you know, you know it, it's, it's not going to work out. Right. That's why, as Muslims, we know for sure you cannot put Muslims in one basket. Because definitely, I will have to work with Jubilee in a particular area in Amani in a particular area, in say Cod in a particular area, and at that point I will go to the political leadership and ask for my resources. Because definitely, why are we all uh, very happy as Kenyans? Because we have a constitution that now tells you there is no central authority that is responsible for your resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have to, to, to also change your mind mm -hmm. to know that to get these resources, this is the political leadership in this area. And this is where I am going to now start lobbying the leadership there. Now, Louis, tell me, is that being partisan? Lobbying the political leadership to actually get your resources, or resources for your... Yeah, There's yeah, another yeah, dimension here, Louis. You asked a question... But that's we, level two. We're not in there. Yeah, we're not there. Yes. Now, you, you, asked a question about, yes. you asked a question about maturity of voters. Yes. Are we... Are we uh, are we, we, have we become that mature? Yes. And, and are we that discerning, finally, as a voter? 
Uh, my quick answer would be we have made progress. Yes. Made a lot of progress. Uh, a, lot a lot of progress. Of progress. So lot that's of your quick, polite uh, answer. Uh, call it that. Yes. But uh, what I'd like to say is, <laughs> I'll give example. Look at what's happened in Nyanza in recent times. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? In Nyanza, in Luo Nyanza, mm -hmm. Luo Nyanza, uh, people have told the Prime Minister, it's okay, we'll give you a vote, <laughs> but for God's sake, let us elect our own leaders, the ones we Let's want. Sort out our Don't impose the, anybody yeah. on us. Yeah. Do not mm -hmm. Even the Jubilee candidate yesterday uh, had to, to go back in, when he went to Meru absolutely. To, to say, okay, no more peace, uh, six yes, peace. Absolutely. Because yeah. people yeah. told him, no. Yeah. Uh, another thing, even my own gut feeling tells me that this election, there's something about this election yeah. that is, is special. Uh, I remember in, 2000 and, in 2002, when Kibaki was being voted into 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 power, that Kibaki, time. Kibaki Tosha, yeah. yeah, Kibaki Tosha thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a certain very good feeling between the Jaluos and the Kikuyu, and I'm talking now from from the, <laughs> at the university where I, I work. Yeah, you, you have a unique scenario where yeah. you've got, you've got uh, a whole, whole other constituents there when the Jaluos, the Kikuyus, and all this block that became NAC found a common United, banner, they, and there was a very good feeling there and so on until 2005 during the referendum when. There was a split. Again, there was a, an emotional uh, situation that, that was pretty negative and so on. Then we come to 2007, uh, the, 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 the scenario again repeated itself and so on and so forth. This election, for some reason, I, I see a good feeling all around. It's as if it doesn't matter. Let, Father, the, politicians, is that, well, let is, the politicians Father, make, is that hope make fools. Or you actually this is my, is this is my experience. Okay, is the the ground. Ground. But let me say something. Okay, uh, do you have, is there actually a trajectory to that? Because I, I know your role. I know yours is to give hope. Don't tell me about what you see looks hopeful. I need you to back it up. Right, actually, we are doing civic education. We have gone as a uh, governance and advocacy ministry in the church. We have gone to them. Okay, they said the eight provinces. Mm. Let me use the provinces. And on the ground, when we ask people now to discuss, we are hearing people themselves on the ground giving reasons why not the six piece, giving reasons why they cannot just be put in tribal alliances, yeah. giving reasons why some people cannot see the right of day because they were imposed on them yeah. during the nomination yeah. process. Yeah. It's a lot of hope. Yeah, there's a lot of hope. I think, Louis, also, somebody once said that um, we make our institutions and then our institutions make us. And I think we can't underestimate what the Constitution has done. The fact that we're in a completely different dispensation. Yeah. The people will change because the system is different. Uh, like my brother here said, when we're no longer fighting for one seat here, there's a whole lot of things going on. I mean, we recently had a governor debate, for instance, uh, at Mavuno. And it was interesting because I think people are much more interested in that conversation than they are even in the presidential conversation. Because oh, yes. this actually affects me more. Yeah. Yes. And exactly. my resources Immediately. more. Immediately. Right. And so already you can tell this is becoming now an Nairobi issue. And yes. people are much more passionate about this city than they've ever been. Yeah. Because they know this is actually more important to me than the guy at the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll have this hump that we're going through right now because we're in the middle of two systems. But I really do believe it's not too hopeful to say we're in the middle of change. We are. And we are. We are something the propaganda changing. machinery. Yeah. Is still at work. How about and again, and how again. about how about I I, I, I I tell you this? Kenya is said to be Christian, largely so, but the people who are looking for leadership, when they're looking for promise, though harder, they seem to say, uh, Latif's followers keep their word, as opposed to the kind of fickle behavior that Father has just described. Within a space of two years, those who are enjoying the cup of the same banner change it <laughs> and lose it. Mm. But the Muslim is supposed to be one who keeps their word. And in fact, there's an analogy I keep giving that the Kikuyu and, and the Muslim are very good at sorting out internal issues and keeping promises. Has this turned out to be a good thing that has made you attractive? Is that why they're seeking your direct endorsement as leaders? Because they know if they come to your venue, and you say you'll stick it out with them, then they can happily move along knowing you will not change your mind. Yeah, but Louis, now look at what has happened. The same people who were on this side last month, and they were actually went to the media and made the announcement, mm -hmm. have again shifted yeah. their allegiance to this side. It shows you there's also confusion in the community. It's like there is this thinking that was there before. How do you rationalize it with the realities that, that we have now? And I have seen some of my friends become completely irrelevant mm. in what is happening That's now. Right. Because no one trusts them anymore. 
You used uh -huh. to be here. Now you have moved here. What, what has changed? Yeah. And, and now, when you say that, you are alluding to the same argument that we are not yet issue driven we, in our we reactions. We are not there yet. No, but, no, no. But at least on matters. Because that's definitely not an issue driven change. Absolutely. No, so it's Louis, a personality Louis, driven see, change. See, it's the leadership that was there before yeah. that people actually looked to for for guidance have become confused. They have given opportunity to the to the to, to the ordinary Muslims or Kenyans to actually make their own decisions now based on the knowledge that we are all talking mm. about, yes. civic education. Louis, Louis uh, the, this, this whole thing of, of transformation, transformation mm. is very gradual. It, it takes time. And it's one step at a time. Yeah. And uh, you, cannot, you, can't tra you can't transform all Kenyans, all Muslims, all believers, all Catholics, all Christians, tra in the here now and transform them yes. all at once. It can't happen. And, There's and no micro I mean, I think one of the things I say is, no. yeah. right now where we are, I mean, the Americans took 80, 90 years in yeah. a civil war That's right. to get to where we've reached now. Right. I think we must also be able to look back and say, God has brought us far. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've really years. come a long way in 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. And we must commend ourselves for that. That's right. And say, you know, it's easy to beat ourselves down and say, oh, look where we are. I mean, the Americans fought a tribal war, if you right. want to call it that, mm -hmm. uh, after 90, uh, 85 years of right. independence. Yeah. And so the fact that we're where we are, yeah. I feel like there's a hope. Uh, and, 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 again, and again, Pastor Marini, Take the religious organizations. Mm. Look at the things we are saying here. Mm. You're talking about civic education within the church. Mm. You're talking about involvement in governance. Yeah. You're talking about uh, instilling value systems in the youth and everybody else is talking about. There is a time in this country not so long ago when religious organizations just didn't want to be involved in any... They, they just talked spiritual... They just talked yeah. spiritual mm. issues. They mm. just preached preach issues and so on and didn't want to get involved in hard economic, political and social issues. Yeah. Today, every yeah. religious organization is involved in, involved in some kind of activity Absolutely. that you could call political, uh, that has a political connotation, yeah. economic con connotation, yeah, you know, the social issues that affect real people yeah. and the churches, are, churches and uh, communities are involved absolutely. in this. And, and if you progress. see the effort that is being put, number one, the burden, let me, let me call it the burden, maybe for, you know, I mean the burden that uh, is upon the Kenyan today, yeah. the kind of prayer that is taking place today, the kind of condemnation. I come from Mabel County. Some young people decided to throw stones. Yes. In my home county. Yes. Let me tell you, they were condemned all over this nation. Really? I mean, mm. I, I went to introduce myself and I said, I come from Embu. You see? You, you fellows are stone throwers. I mean, you, you guys are the stone throwers. <laughs> You've the overtaken the other known, uh, yeah, yeah, known yeah. the traditional ones. I, 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 I said, we are the most peaceful. You know, when <laughs> uh, something was done, we are the most peaceful. And the, the area that was given number one to be less prone, least prone to clashes. Then he was saying, but how come you guys are throwing stones? What's wrong with you? I said, those are people who are becoming very aware. And that was very far from Embo. But they're just saying we cannot repeat what was being done in Embo the other day. So you can see there's a graduate. And God is helping us to yeah. get there. Mm -hmm. And it is slowly. But we are going in the right direction. I can tell you I'm more hopeful today yeah. than yeah. I've ever yeah. been in. You know the nation. traditional stone throwers are, are having a demonstration saying, I took up two per mile ten. We cannot throw stones again. Which in itself was a... Well, clearly the which, guys in Embu didn't hear them. Yeah. They decided to overtake <laughs> yeah. their own. No, they, they are not they, throwing them. Let me not watch that clip when it was <laughs> on people, the news. People do change their aspirations. I hope <laughs> <laughs> that's not an acquired aspiration for your relatives. No, no, no. I, I mean, <laughs> but whatever that's it was, right. but, but they, they are regretting right now because they, they wouldn't do that again. Fine. So direct responsibility, when we come back, we'll take a short break and discuss the role of religious leaders in this country. We are back. We're discussing the role of religious leaders in this country. And directly, we're speaking to you because we're trying to find out what influence they have on you as you listen to them in whatever forum, whatever capacity where you engage and interact with them. Let's find out what uh, Mshamba's interaction with this issue has been. Mm. Uh, 
Wewe unapika tu kura mpili hata kufikiria. Hata akisema ni support, sita vote. Ha, ni mchungaji. Mchungaji. Mtumishi wa Bwana. Ndio ni mchungaji, lakini si mchungaji wa ngombe, ni mchungaji wa Bwana. Mm. Wacha nikwambie kitu moja. Mm. Mimi siku moja tulikuwa tunapichana na na pipi yangu mama Neke sati, "Oh, hey, mtoto, sijui atakuwa kasi kani." Nikasema, "Pass, wacha tufanye experiment." Tukaeka nyumbani kwa mesi, nikaeka kachanga katoko. Mhm. Tukaeka pipilia. Mhm. Tukaeka pesa kama. Mhm. Tukachificha. Mhm. Tukangocha kuche. Mtoto akakuja. Akaangalia pipilia, akafungua kwa ile pipilia. Kasoma kitoko, akaweka hivi, akaweka hapa. Mhm. Akachukua ni changa. Mhm. Akamimina. Yote. Yote. Flash. Flash. Mhm. Akachukua pesa, akaweka kwa mfuko. Nilimwambia huyo ni mwanasiasa, anachanganya yote. Kwa hivyo, kama mtu amaamua kuwa pasta, kwa cha kuwa pasta. Siasa ni chafu. Kaya unajua pasta na nakuombea na ndio anakuletea baraka. Kwa hivyo akisema fanya ile kitu pasta amesema. Mm. Kama amesema pikia huyu pikia. Kama ni yeye mwenyewe mpikie. Inaona kuna shida. Fort file mtumishi amesema. That's it. Final. Na nita fort file mtumishi amesema. Kwa hivyo file anasemanga anachunga kondoo ni kweli. Si kondoo ndio hii hapa. Yaani hata ufikiri unafuata tu unafuata tu unafuata tu mtu kama mimi msasa unaita kondoo sana mtu anaanza mbaga anachunga kondoo na kweli mimi tu ndo unaita kondoo sasa kondoo ndio inafuatanga tu aisee gentlemen that's the kind of influence you have what are you doing with that level of influence? Well, I, I think uh, the first thing is I would want to, to respond to the Mushamba's element about the Christian leaders, especially involvement in politics. And I think that's a question, even if we started a debate now, I do not answer. Because there are cases we know even in history outside of this country where it has worked. Somebody like Martin Luther King, well known, he was a Baptist minister. I mean, Archbishop Tutu was involved in, and they did a clearly good job. But then, the others who will get involved and then confuse the flock, because they, they will also come, because if you're not issue-driven and you're just moving from party to party, you confuse the congregation. Like if Bishop stood out and he said he is in, in Kano, for instance, and he is praising that, and half of the congregation is not there, then they, they, they feel now orphaned, the ones who are not in Kano. But if there were issues to be, you know, driven like apartheid, you know, or, you know, some slavery, injustice, some injustice, some injustice that has then to be addressed. I think you, you start out. Then again, the giftings comes in. The only thing is, as long as the, at the end of the day, after elections. You've said something very interesting, gifts. Now, you're all in modern society, but in the rural areas, there's always this guy who Ghana's influence by the amount of gifting he does to the church. It's not an alien concept. And this person starts to get influence within the church. How do you protect and how do you train the ones you have here to be able to empower their relatives who are out there and they see their persons defer to the, people, to the guy who brought benches, the guy who donated... Uh, iron sheets. Iron, iron sheets. Sheet. <laughs> and so... Mm. Louis, I don't think, um, we, I think we've been trying to share with you that Kenyans are not there yet, but Kenyans have moved on. And uh, quite, and I, I feel what, what was making my colleague here, Dominic Omogonda, so excited about this election is that definitely there's a feeling here that Kenyans have moved beyond. You brought us iron sheets, you brought us chairs, you brought us benches. That mode is so yesteryear that I don't think now any, any politicians moving around distributing that will influence the vote. Not, 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 not this time. But the, what about uh, Father Mwede who was influenced of a great number of youth and you are probably sitting in functions. I don't know how you separate now your personal invites 
and your official invites to the extent that when you're seen in certain functions, when you're seen in the company of certain leaders, yeah. how does it then not become an endorsement to well, your people? Well, one of the things I've come to understand is I actually don't have a personal life. And I think that's one of the things yeah. I say to leaders. Mm. You, you can't have a personal life. You can't say this is a personal issue. Uh, and so for me, I say I have come to the place where I've realized my relationships represent uh, the church simply because of my position. And they have a saying, they say, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't aspire to leadership if you aspire to also... So you're aware that you're permanently in the spotlight? I, I realize yeah. that. Wherever yeah. I go, I am. Who I speak to represents... People see that and they, re they see official relationship there. Right. And so I will make sure that my relationships are balanced. One of the things I've said is, I, and I think one of my brothers said it earlier, when I know that somebody's coming to the church, because sometimes you hear, then I'll invite a, another one. <laughs> because uh -huh. I want to make sure that there's... There's a balance. And, and, and you know, it's, it's very interesting. Politicians are very wily. Oh, yeah. And so when you're, in the, when you're in the spotlight, when you come there, then it becomes very clear. Even if you didn't invite the person, the person will even say, if you give them an opportunity to say, thank you for the invitation. <laughs> no, you, know? you don't oh, really? have to give them an opportunity. What they do is, after the service, you know, the media, of course, when they hear so-and-so is in that church, and after the service where you have no control as the, the, the pastor, they will come now to interview the person. And, of course, you, you are seen lacking in the background. You know, you are seen <laughs> someone standing in the background. And then the, it is construed. Endorsement. Ed endorsement. <laughs> Latif, how do you yeah. navigate this in, in your scene? But now I, know I, don't think, the, the I don't think we have that problem. That's what I'm saying. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is on them. Yeah, I don't think we have that problem. So, uh, we, but we, we also watch. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, we've keenly watch Sundays, which politicians will go to what church. Mm -hmm. And I want to also... <laughs> ah, also yeah. so this plays out for you. Also. Yeah, also, I, I want to... We are also watching which ones are dressed in Muslim clothes. <laughs> Muslim <club. laughs> But exactly. where do you watch them? So we yeah. watch each other. <laughs> but I, I also want to commend the, the church. Really, I want to say it, that we have watched the church this time, after uh, the referendum. They have not come out clearly endorsing anybody. To us, that's a very good thing. But do you trust that it's out of fairness or it's out of confusion? It is not. It's the way the, 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 the way the country should go. Leave the decisions to the voter himself. You cannot chase, I, I know you cannot chase anybody who comes to your church. No, it's, you it's, not, it's not. We cannot do that. Yeah. But that engagement with your flock is what we completely disengage ourselves from. Yeah. And it's good that they, they talk to the masses outside and they talk to the press outside yeah. because they have no control. Do you have invitations? You don't to invite speak people. in your no, sessions? No, 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 no. There are those who will send you a text, we want to come or we no, are No, for coming. them, for the most. For us, we don't. No, they are normally invited but for don't dinner. But you speakers or probably both Muslims maybe if it's a Muslim and is politically inclined because they've also said some of the most uh, militant and some of the most radical uh, statements come from within the mosques from a visiting imam, for example, a visiting speaker who has a particular position and is allowed to speak in a particular mosque. And if he's there, I think in Nairobi, if somebody is speaking at uh, Jamia, uh, people will pay great attention to it. There are certain mosques which are singled out. Yeah, let, let me take ourselves back to the times we had some very serious, serious riots in Nairobi here. Mm. We had a visiting imam from Jamaica who came through not the traditional routes, mm -hmm. we just found him here. And I can tell you, we, we, we as, as Muslim leaders, we, 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 we learned our lesson at that time. And I can, I can assure you now, no demonstration has ever been organized from Jamia Mosque from that day. Mm -hmm. Because it was a collective decision by the leadership that these things have to stop. Because I think we suffered more. Yeah. We suffered more uh, as a community than anybody else. Uh, the buildings were destroyed there, a lot of property was destroyed, and we asked for what reason. Mm -hmm. So as we are talking now, anybody who wants to come and have audience with the congregations in any mosque, yes. not only in Jamia Mosque, mm -hmm. the committees there are very keen what is the subject matter that you want to, to discuss here. And if they're not convinced, you don't find any, uh, any preachers just taking the microphone, as you, as you suggested, mm -hmm. and saying what they want. No, it's not happening, and I can tell you we have learned our lessons the hard way. Look at what happened in Mombasa in August last year when mm -hmm. we had that unfortunate incident of uh, Sheikh Abu Drogo being, uh, being assassinated. The spontaneous reaction was from a section of very angry youth. And we went out there as leaders and we talked to them. We used our own media, the radio station, to tell them, 
Whatever you want to do, we reflect very negatively on us. Whatever problems we think we might have with the government, let the leadership engage with the government and with the security systems. And believe me, it worked. We were very afraid of the suppression of terrorism bill. Mm -hmm. And we actually opposed it until the, the late minister, no, 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 the current minister, Ole Motito, on appointment reached out to us and said, let's get this bill out, the, out of the table. Not as the government, but you come and we sit together. Initially, when we went to that meeting, there was a lot of suspicion on both sides. But when the ice broke, we actually stayed in that office for three days and we removed all the contentious areas. And when the bill went to parliament, we knew it would pass. Mm. And we made sure that the Muslim members of parliament would actually forward the bill and lobby for the bill to be passed so that we are all behind that. You know, it shows progress. But did you get help from our brothers here? Yeah. 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 A lot. It was the because it was council. In fact, I remember the Christian church saying that, why, are, why is this bill being so open, you know, to, to misinterpretation? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the policemen had so much powers. You'd be arrested and actually jailed until you are proved innocent. That was the, the gist of the matter. Your property would be seized irrespective of how you got it. Even if it was a false accusation, that bill allowed you uh, allowed your property to be seized before you approved innocence. So mm -hmm. did you so, approach so we worked your brother around for help? The, in fact, the they, they issued forum. statement on their own. We didn't yes. approach them. Oh. They did issue statements on their own, and we said this is a very good this is a very good sign. Mm -hmm. And using, using that background is how we engage with the minister, and in fact with the intelligence system, with the police and the minister, the, so the, then, the office. Let me take that kind of interaction, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. It was perfect. It it, it was a perfect team effort. Yeah. How do they feel about uh, some of your community now endorsing certain leaders? Have you had any contestations from our brothers? Yeah, we have received you know, you know, formal and informal communication. Diplomatic what, or vitriolic? No, no, no. Very diplomatic. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going on? And we, we, in fact, we have said the same thing I've said here tonight. As a council, we have not. As a national leadership, we have not endorsed any political political uh, grouping because it's not but the right it, thing. It may, it may, it may be uh, relevant here to say that uh, uh, you may want to remember the time when the, the Christians, the Muslims, the Hindus all came together, all the religious groups came together and formed what we called the Fungamano Initiative. Remember? The uh, Kenyan Interreligious Council. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, which is still in existence. It's still, it still, is in, existence. still in existence. Yeah. Uh, uh, it may be important to note that that, that council uh, focuses on the more recognized groups, yeah. you know. If it's the Muslims, they'll deal with Supkem, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Uh, if it's even like at the university, when I'm recruiting a Muslim, like right now, I'm trying to recruit a Muslim cha chaplain. Yes. I will not recruit anybody who has not been. How is that going? We're getting somewhere. Is it a first? Oh no no no! I've already uh, we we always have had a Muslim yeah. chaplain. Chaplain, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the one I had has, has moved on to the department to become full time teacher. And now we have to recruit him. Now, what I'm saying is, I will not recruit a guy who has not been, you know, supported That's by Supkem, right? right? In so, right. But I will now not go to another little Muslim group and say that that's the one I'll depend on. No, the more recognized groups uh, are the ones that we deal with. Uh, and but having said, so, yeah, yeah. No, no. having said so, I, I think I want us to come back to the debate where we were. Because we were talking about influence. Yes. Yeah, the influence of the, of the, of the, the religious leader. And I think it's important also to take into account that there are very many dynamics that take place in the social existence of a church community. The faith dynamic, right? The social dynamics. So for instance, Masinda here uh, runs a church uh, in, 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 uh, in, in Eastlands. But in that church, there are people who have relatives who may be politicians. Oh, yes. Friends who may be politicians. Yes. Right? Even poli they are called politicians who are members of my church. Yes. They are politicians mm. who are members of the church. Mm. Those are dynamics that we have to take into account. Mm. And we cannot divorce any of these dynamics because they are all dynamics that must be managed. Yes. They must be managed. And so the role of the religious leader here is to manage those dynamics mm -hmm. uh, in a sensible, in a way that will not bring any, 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 any frictions within the community and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And in a way that will not look like the church, the particular church community, mm -hmm. is endorsing a particular individual, individual or a particular way of doing things and mm -hmm. so on. And I think so it's about management. Yes, and I think the media needs also to commend the church this time round. 
The mean what score? And as we do that, I'll just put, I'll put this up as we continue talking, yes. and I'll just pass it around. <laughs> right. Let's continue. Yeah. Just Look, put that up for a few seconds. I, I, I hope it, it will it, come it, to you. It, don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. On the score, mm. that there has been there has, there have been attempts to bring either ethnic strife, <laughs> and the church has fought that. You know, mm -hmm. the church, the religious organization have fought that very clearly. But then at the same time. There has, been, there has been a kind of a move to bring religious tensions and conflict even around these elections time. If you look at some of the bombings and other things that were done directly to the church, mm -hmm. to provoke the church to react, you know, and come and say Muslims are against us and the case. But we stood our ground and we said, no, this is not about religion. Such that to the point that if uh, a Muslim candidate goes to a Christian community, you are given hearing. And then if a Christian goes to a, an Islamic you are given hearing because we should now mature up to the point of realizing we are all created in the image of God mm -hmm. and we should value human life and dignity mm -hmm. and not just based on uh, you know religious extremism <laughs> and, and such and so at the at the end of the day <laughs> <laughs> well, that made you take us beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that so made you yeah, skip a yo, beat. It's there. very scary. Yeah. But, but, but I'm saying but, it is good, it's, it's good uh, Louis, to come mm. to an election where you realize the religious animosity is at the lowest it, it can ever be. Yeah. Yeah. That we are tolerant. If somebody of another faith is speaking, you don't hear people you know, not wanting even to listen to him. If you look at the endorsements that are coming even to about the, the various political offices, and even the leaders who are in different commissions, that element of, ah, what is he talking about? I mean, even in the social media, that is not there. Yeah. We have gone a long way. And I mean, when you, look about, when you look at history and you look at the British and the Irish, or the Catholics and the Protestants, Protest, Protestants in yeah. uh, the, U, the US, mm -hmm. you're going to find that they had the same tensions we have and have been able to move beyond them. So you don't even think about those things when you think of the UK. You think of them as one people. And yet they have all these tribes exactly. that are there that have learned to coexist. And so I feel like what my brother Wesley is saying is very important because if we have been able to handle uh, the big threat we had to our security, country security, and yet stay united, huh? we didn't mm -hmm. go devolve into the Nigerian situation. Mm -hmm. We still stayed united as a nation. I believe that it tells us, even when it comes to these ethnic groups that we are, we've struggled with, that it, we're a step away to being able to solve some of those issues. I think when I look at the young people, you asked me about the young people, I see people who, they are in a very interesting situation because they've grown up, unlike their parents, um, in a very multi-ethnic, you know, yeah. went to primary schools where there were all kinds of Kenyans, all the 42 plus uh, ethnic groups were there. And so they grew up without even understanding issues like their parents did because their parents grew up in one uh, area. Yeah. But now they, are, they have grown up in a context where they are becoming ethnicized. This is what we've seen in the last few years, uh, yes. especially we've in the last couple of years. We've tried to ethnicize We've ethnicized them. a group that wasn't ethnicized before. I really feel that this constitution was a great thing in that sense. Because by, first of all, by removing that tension between that, that zero-sum game in our, in, our, in our leadership, what it does, it, it, just, it allows people to start focusing on the basics. And I really do feel Louis, I'm very optimistic. I don't think I'm optimistic because I'm a religious leader or a Christian leader. I'm optimistic because the fundamentals for this country are right. But, but I think the, the one weakness that we have, I, I said earlier I got involved, I was like the religious representative, one of the religious representatives, I think all the, the only ordained minister. And then there was a, the Hindu and the, uh, the Muslim community invited in the task force on national values. Were you in good company? Yeah, well, a, a bit sometimes hostile company. <laughs> but, <laughs> you, but you should have asked Latif. No, yeah. but at the end of the day, we came out and, you know, we, we were able to state the positions that we are on the issue about Article 10, on uh, national values and principles of governance. And whatever we came up with, were given to cabinet and the policy paper was, was produced. And one of the indicators, so that at least we may be able now to go a long way in this for future, because I think we are not just thinking about March 4th, we are thinking about the future. The future. Yeah. We need now to stream, mainstream the, 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 the issue about national values and principles of governance by getting whatever uh, cabinet policy paper that was produced to go to parliament. And then we start talking, and that's what I was saying, we start talking about values. Because when you start talking yeah. about values, yes. we, we go another level. Uh, of the eth ethnicizing Kenya. Yes, and we, you feel like the, the whole issue about being patriotic. Yes. You know, 
to the point that if I know you are Kenyan, I value you more for that, then I can go to the second layer and say, oh, we can't communicate in this because I, I have different cultural values mm. and, and such. But the mm. one value is Very uniting. Good. Well, so you, have, you have a role. I'll, I'll, in fact, I know, and like I said, my challenge was I would have loved to have this for such a long period of discussion in terms of more and more opportunities. But even as we draw towards elections, you have a role as a citizen. You have a role when you go to your faith-based leadership and you have a role to play and now you're getting more empowered so it isn't just upon the gentlemen who've come here to speak and represent their faiths but it's also upon you to understand that they are now interested in making you more empowered they're interested in increasing your opportunities but you've got to take them up as a citizen so in closing i'm going to ask this gentleman to have a quick word for you who's the voter or you who's the beneficiary of the voting of your parent or your guardian or the person you live with and the leader. Give me a clean message, JB. One message for the leader, for the fourth, one message for the voter. I'll, I'll begin first of all to ask. <laughs> you understand here? <laughs> this is cartoon. Yeah. I don't think there's any religious leader mm. who is in his right mind who will dare do any of this. Not this year. So we'll, be, we'll fight, but this won't happen? Yeah, this won't happen because okay. even right. political leaders who are prone to this have been told very clearly by the electorate this is not working. So we have grown out of this. We've grown out yeah. of this. So that's a good thing. This is which is very good for our country. Okay. Secondly, uh, therefore that's to the religious leaders. Right. To the political leaders mm. is simply this. If we are a true democracy, then we should allow democratic principles to be manifested even in our political parties and even in the, in the entire country so that people have a right to choose the leaders of their choice out mm -hmm. of their conscience mm -hmm. without being dictated to yes. by their political leaders whatever influence they may have because right. that is the essence of true democracy right isn't true democracy is that even my own wife has a right to elect a candidate of her choice without me necessarily trying to influence her because i'm your husband you to pick at the bemoja because that's been our language here because mm -hmm. that's true democracy mm -hmm. and then Find it to the electorate. As you go to the polls on 4th of March, it is important to remember, it is not only the president you are voting for. We are focusing on the presidential. But do you know, Louis, the governors, without any, barring any legal issues, they'll be sworn in by Wednesday, Thursday, next week. Mm -hmm. And they'll start working. And people don't realize, just like my friend Abdul Latif has said, it, the governor has a very strong role. role to play now in the next uh, in the next phase and we are focusing on this one office up here not realizing we have a governor a county government that's coming into place and this the the, uh, the system to swear them is already in place therefore i want to plead with the electorate this time please don't listen and this one I, i'll say it here because don't go for this six piece voting interrogate everybody standing in every office it is your freedom you can choose a, a president from this party a, a governor from another party, a, a, an MP from another party, because you know they can do a job. I know you can do this for quite a while. Ume Maliza. No, Sija Maliza. 10 seconds. Yeah, 10 seconds. Uh. So that you interrogate so that, because whoever you choose as a senator, you are given, giving him a different job. Whatever you're choosing for president, there's a different role. Look for people who can fit and do those roles effectively and go for that. And may God bless Kenya, because Kenya is greater than all of us, and there's life in Kenya beyond 4th of March. Thank you, Absolutely. John? Well, I think it's just to say that the earth and everything in it belongs to the God of all creation, the supreme God whom our constitution recognizes. And therefore, let's be, let's be aware that when we go to the voting booth on 4th of March, where your alliance will not be able to see what you're doing, and where even your political, you know, the one who has sponsored you is not able to see, God will be there in the booth. And you better honor him. And you will on, only honor God if you put men and women with men and women of integrity, men and women who are qualified to be able to do the work that you're giving them out there. And for the leaders, and I want to say, please, Let's stop propaganda. Something we'll be ashamed about tomorrow and the day after. Let's be clean on this matter. I know it is difficult for you to, to be able to do that. And don't intimidate anyone. Okay, John. Don't intimidate anyone. At the end of the day, we are, we are a nation after 4th of March. 
and you need you need all of us after that and may god bless kenya and allow us by all means let the kingdom of god come and let his will be done on earth as it is done in heaven let's be let's and those who are going to lose please accept accept it okay. if you're not satisfied go to court <laughs> and if you if you win please incorporate these other people i mean we have had accept them years. accept them and give them even something to do father with your, your abilities. <laughs> father she said we're talking to the leaders and then to the voter yes now let me begin with the leaders uh leadership is a gift from god for the nation and i know that amongst all the people who are saying they want to lead and so on there are some there who are true leaders because they go for what is just they go for what is true they go for what is <coughs> good for the people of kenya if you as a leader has been going around saying things saying things that you will do which you know you will not be able to do which you know you have no intention of doing you must be ashamed of yourself let's go to the voter you the voter you have an obligation to remember one thing that as you cast that vote whether you're voting for the governor for the president for the senator whoever it is you are making a decision as to what kind of a country you want to live in nice. and that is important and another thing that in a true democracy which is what we aspire to be there is no vote that goes to waste no if you're voting for a value system if you're voting for what you truly believe in your vote will not go to waste and don't don't fall into this folly of saying oh uh, we don't want to waste a vote i don't want to waste a vote if that's the way you think then you're not thinking like a democrat you are not thinking that uh, like a person in a true democracy you must vote for the person you think is the one who represents the kind of kenya nice we way. want for the future yes and again another thing we must note here we are kenyans in the next few days between now and the fourth there is a lot of money that's going to exchange hands in view of the vote. Please do not vote because of that money. And don't vote. sell your vote. Do not sell your vote, but do not vote because of that. Vote because you are convinced that that's the right way to go. Right, Father. God bless you. Right, Father. <clears throat> that's it. Dr. my brothers and sisters out there, the leaders of tomorrow, I want to be very frank with you. We can predict who will be the winner in all manner. But ultimately it is him up there who knows who among you will be the president, mm -hmm. will be the, the vice president, will be the governor and the, all the other positions. We don't know. Neither do you know. You might try to persuade all of us in all the manner including bribing us. Again to the voters, those of us will be actually voting for our leaders tomorrow. I want to appeal you to appeal to you by telling you that you have only one vote. You don't have two votes. You'll only be allowed to vote once. Before you cast that vote, remember you are actually charting the path of your destiny. And collectively, the destiny, the destiny of all of us, either at the world level, at the county level, or the national level, do not waste that vote. Let me remind my colleagues and my friends and my brothers and sisters at the coast province. I know there has been issues about people not voting mm. and others not voting mm. and others voting. Let us be frank. If we don't vote, somebody else will be voted in. Yes. And you will not complain about that. You have the chance to elect your governor. I'm sure he'll take care of your issues. The same issues you are, raise, you are raising at the national level can be addressed effectively at the, national, at the local level, at the county level. And you have the power to do that. Please do not waste that opportunity. And together let's do this peacefully by making sure that we, we vote peacefully and on the 5th of uh, March all of us will be relaxing waiting for the announcements to be made by the rightful uh, institutions to do that let not not any any of us try to predict the winner the announcements will be made by the independent electoral and, and boundaries boundaries commission, commission. Yes. and that's the, the institution that is allowed to do the announcement let's give them the opportunity God bless Kenya Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's some ready. Take us home. Well, um, I think for my, mine will be brief just to say 50 years ago, uh, we stood on the verge of this great land, uh, great things that God had done for us, and the opportunity was there. We were not ready for it. 
And I believe that because we were young as a country, we were come together as many different nations, forming one nation. We've wandered for the last 50 years, um, in a sense, in a wilderness as a nation. I believe we're on the verge of great things. I believe 50 years, it's not a coincidence that 50 years into our history, we're standing on this very amazing time. And what I want to say to our leaders is, as you come into leadership, whoever God will elect, do not lead us back into the wilderness. Uh, you have an opportunity. Kenya is in a great place right now. Uh, and this nation is poised for greatness. And you cannot be the one. History will judge you very harshly mm. if you will take us backwards. Mm. This, mm. We can only go forward as a unified nation, and you have that great opportunity. I don't envy you, but I will pray for you. Uh, for the electorate, I just want to echo what my brothers have said, that there is no such thing as a wasted vote. Uh, Father Wamugunda said it very well. I had somebody talk to me and say, I want to vote for a good person, but if I vote, I may be wasting my vote. Why don't I no. vote for one who is a lesser evil? And I want to say something. You will never have a good conscience before your children if you say, I voted for evil, whether it was greater or lesser. You must vote with your conscience. Vote for the right person. Because when you do that, you strengthen them. They might lose the election, but yes. you give them yes. influence in the next government. Right. And you encourage them to run again. Right. But if we teach people that only the evil will succeed, then you have failed your nation. So vote well. God bless you. And see you on the other side of March 4th, because this nation has a great future. Right. Gentlemen, I want to thank you very much, especially for staying with me this late. Uh, but I'll just say to you who's listening and watching at this time, I'm not even going to try and top that message. I will only say it is a prayer I share. And if we claim to be a country driven by conscience, driven by faith, here's the test. My name is Louis. Have a good night. <laughs>